sleeves rolled up, ladies and gentlemen, of the RPW YouTube channel. Today is an RK day, and today is another rise day in the final of the first round of the Junior Heavyweight Tournament. We have some big, big matches, six matches here today, all full of superstars looking to advance one step closer to that Junior Heavyweight Championship here on Rise as we get things started with Ryan Curtis coming off the back of a big, big win against Dino on Friday Night Fury against Junior Palmer of World War Zone. The main event today, Fredo versus Dragon Romanic, a rivalry that's been going on for a while now, ladies and gentlemen, with big stipulations regarding other championships. So a big, big showing here today. A lot of people needing and wanting a win Desperately. We'll see who can pick it up and advance one step closer. RK, this is why I love Rise. Little dressing gown for a Wednesday. Ladies and gentlemen, play the intro. This is who we are. I look at what's in front of me, don't focus on the other things I know that if I'm struggling, that only leads to a tough for me And I want and need something that could challenge me Build up all my calluses, push through all their callousness Becoming reckless, I'm ambitious and I'm restless, yeah Was an apprentice but possessed a different engine So I asked a lot of questions and I learned a lot of lessons, yeah Got different weapons and I worked on my direction, and yeah we gon' hike through the flames We gon' die with a name and we gon' fight through the pain We gon' rise up and change and we gon' strive to make gains Cause we don't hide from the blame We take pride when we train We gon' rise up and change and we gon' hike through the flames We gon' die with a name and we gon' fight through the pain and we gon' rise up and change and we gon' strive to make gains We don't hide from the blame We take pride when we train We gon' rise up and change Some big, big names here today on Rise Indeed. Ryan Curtis being one of them. Coming off the back of beating Dino and Fred Nafiru, like I said. And not a lot of people expected me to be saying that here today. It was a massive win. He wanted to prove that he can belong in... Oh, I love the RPW logos on the stage. He wanted to prove that he can belong in the hardcore division. And I think he proved that he can do some damage in there. He wants Norm next week or this week on Friday now. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can knock off Dino and Norm back to back weeks. I say let him have a match against Lamin. He's going to lose, of course. The World Hardcore Champion is unstoppable, unbeatable. He is the conqueror of Freshy Sibs, if I need to remind you of that. But it's nice to give the rookies a chance and a false of sense hope every now and then. And his opponent, all the way from Woe Warzone, one half of the Palmer's Paradise, him and his brother, uh, Austin Palmer. This is Junior. He is known as the Judge. I like his sunglasses. Very. Uh, very similar to to a certain somebody's. They, they remind me of someone's, but I'm not quite sure who. He's got the pyro here on Rise. That is for sure. The temperature's rising up here. I mean, my, my announcer's desk is up on the stage. I'm very close to the pyro and the fire, uh, fire right now. Kind of scary up here, if I'm honest with you. RP Dub Chance raining down here in London as Ron gets things underway. Ryan Curtis of Friday Night Fury and Junior Palmer. Oh, my goodness of World Wars and a bit of brand warfare action to kick off today's rise as for six more superstars sorry six more superstars advance through the first round of the junior heavyweight tournament and get one step closer to being the first ever inaugural rise champion junior palmer taking curtis over to those ropes nice chop across the chest now focusing on that left leg of Curtis, he's limping already. And it could be smart trying to work on some limb targeting for him to the face though. Curtis able to break out of that one. Irish trip now into the corner. As Curtis looks to, oh my goodness. Looks to take over. Nice flip in the sky. And then a backdrop as well for Ryan Curtis. First cover, hooks the leg on Junior Palmer. Just a one count and a kick out. Both superstars back up to their feet. 
Rolling round is Junior Palmer. The judge taken round to court with that DDT. Lovely high flying maneuver there. Curtis able to counteract though with a reverse DDT. Nice technical wrestling from these two superstars going back and forth to kick off Rise. Ryan Curtis now setting up for one of his big power bombs. Both legs are hooked. Shoulders are down two count. And a kick out by the judge. Already hit one power bomb. Oh, I thought he was going for another one. He's hooking the arms and instead goes for a power driver. And that could be all she wrote. Junior looks done. Ryan Curtis wants to deal more damage though. With some stomps to the chest to help him, uh, help himself out. That power driver done a lot of damage. Done a lot of damage. I think Ryan Curtis went for a spear there. He did indeed. He missed on the rebound. He gets it there though. And he used that against Dino. And he looked good doing it as Ryan Curtis. I tell you something. He gets another win. And he is looking damn decent. While doing it, ladies and gentlemen. He seems to know what he's doing in the ring as of late. As Ryan Curtis advances one step closer to being the first ever champion. What a win for Ryan Curtis. Well, the first Bram v. Bram was so good. We thought, why not have another one? Casey Jacobs of War Warzone. And the Elite One MJ of Friday Night Fury. Now, this man has been struggling. As of late on Friday Night Fury, his win percentage was down as far as 17%. As of late, he's a big dude. He has a good finisher to him, that gut power bomb, but hasn't been able to win with it. As of late, been on a big losing streak and a big uh, unpopular run in Friday Night Fury. Springboard DDT, Casey Jacobs. Lovely, lovely maneuver from the Cruiserweight to kick things off. Showing out for a war zone. Lovely neck breaker. And a standing moonsault as well. Yeah, Casey Jacobs. I want this guy on a cruiserweight title run. I think him, him and Liam West are amazing. Really, really amazing. Of course, the Storm Riders on World Warzone got a win over EOP, Brandon and the Bear. And uh, although Liam West is the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, he's a former cruiserweight champion, a former randomizer champion. He's obviously the main superstar or, 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 the, or, the, or the stronger of the two. If you, if you had to pick one, I think majority would say... Liam West is the better of the two, but take nothing away from Casey Jacobs. 44% win record. And he's he's been showing up when he, need, when he needs to as well. With moves, I was going to say like that, but he missed. Casey Jacobs, Hurricane Rana. Oh, no, it gets reversed. To a big uppercut by the Elite One. Some press-ups as well, helping him out. Is it though? They're both having a little torn off here in front of a sold-out London crowd. And the Elite One was struggling <laughs> with the push-ups. Th that is embarrassing. He was doing some press-ups. He thought it was all good, and then he started struggling. And got a drop kick right to the face. Casey Jacobs able to take over. Now, again, I think Casey Jacobs can have a good cruiserweight run in that strong division. Oh, I love a bit of rise in the morning. More RPW action is never, never a bad thing. Especially with some massive matches like this. We have Gore and Chris coming up. We have Noah and Liam West, Casey Jacobs' tag team partner. Of course, the main event, Dragon Romanic against Fredo. Oh, some big matches today. What's the referee on? What's Ron on? Right now? He's... Is that kind of eight? Or six? I get my hearing mixed up. Kind of seven. It was six. Casey Jacobs back into the ring. Elite one back into the ring. And here we go. Order is restored. Casey Jacobs to the top rope. This is where he feels comfortable. With an elbow to the back of the elite one. Rolls him over. Hooks that leg away from the ropes. Shoulders are down. As Casey Jacobs goes almost one step closer to the Rise Championship. Casey Jacobs would be a good first Rise Champion. As he goes to the top rope. Again, looking for the fourth. No, he's looking for a spiral tap. Flying through the skies. Hooks that right leg of the Elite One again. I thought the hand was coming down. But the shoulder was coming up instead. Casey Jacobs getting a bit of a run up. Flying through the skies. No. The elite One able to dodge it and connects with a Gurridge Powerbomb instead. Speed. Lost to strength here today. But can he get the pin? No, Casey. Able to live to fight another day. Big clothesline. Second big clothesline. Elite one. He looks gassed. But he's getting some energy back. As the crowd is on his side. Casey Jacobs in the corner. Elite one. Is going in the corner for a big splash. Crushing Casey Jacobs. That leg is hooked. The shoulders are down. Rod is there. Perfect position to see the shoulders. And Casey Jacobs somehow kicks out a two yet again. 
Casey. Now fighting back after kicking out. Oh, with the strength with a little spinning. Power slam. The sheer strength. See, that's sort of stuff you expect from the elite one. You don't expect big moves like that from Casey Jacobs. This is, however, what you expect. A second. No, he goes for the headbutt. But he missed. That's the danger. With the high-flying maneuvers. If you don't connect, it can be costly. He was dazed after missing the headbutt. Second gut wrench powerbomb. Again, the Elite One has such a good moveset. I love that finisher. It doesn't often win in matches, though. Oh, my God. And it doesn't again. Casey Jacobs, the Elite One, can't believe it. How has he just kicked out of that? One more. Oh, third time's a charm. Third time. Oh, he rolls out of it. Casey Jacobs rolls out of it. And what is he going for? Instead, little suplex. Spinning suplex. Shoulders are down. Casey Jacobs. No. What a matchup these two are putting on. Elite One busted open on the barricade in front of this sold out London crowd. Here in the Rise Arena, Casey Jacobs face first on the barricade. He's down though. And the Elite One doing some press subs yet again. I love the logo on the outside embossed into the mat. It looks incredible. Jacobs back up. Elite One goes out to meet him though. And who is going to get the upper hand as they have to re enter the ring, of course? To end this match. Casey Jacobs back in. The Elite One going the long way around. See, this is what I don't understand. Surely you would want to get in the ring as soon as possible with him. To start the onslaught again. But instead, Jacobs comes back out and the fight continues outside of the ring. Well, Casey Jacobs is tapping, ladies and gentlemen. But it's not going to matter how much he taps when he's outside of the ring. High arching shot by Brett. Jacobs back out of the ring. He could have got a count of victory. I think the Elite One was down then for the count. But Casey Jacobs wants to win it in the ring. Great matchup between these two so far. Again, Rise is putting on some bangers as of late. Both back in. Ron was halfway through his count. Both re-enter the ring, though. Stopping it and again with a big power slam. I love that move from Casey Jacobs. Top rope, yep. He's going for the headbutt. Or the spiral tap. He's going once more for the spiral tap and connects. Pushing him down. Leg is hooked. Ron going the long way around. Waste a second already. One, two, and a three. Well, Warzone and Friday Night Fury split the wins on Rise so far. What a matchup. He kicked out of what? Two or three gut wrench power bombs? Did Casey Jacobs? That is massive, ladies and gentlemen. What a win for the boy. Moving on on Rise. Again, they seem to all be brand versus brand. Unironically, as Brian Damage of World Warzone goes up against Eli of Friday Night Fury. Brian Damage made his debut, of course, on World Warzone this week. And uh, he has a rise attire, it looks like. The black and orange. Nice takedown there by Eli. It's, uh, speed versus strength yet again here as the cruiserweight of Eli, former cruiserweight champion, goes up against the Man Mountain of Brian Damage. And damage first to roll out of this one. Eli time to show off his high flying maneuvers and DD moves out the way again. Risk and reward when you go searching for big moves like that. Brand damage over the top rope. Just shows how big of a man he is. Both superstars back in the ring. Eli using that speed. Nice reversal. Good luck. Good luck grappling that man from behind. No chance. And there's the strength of Brian damage. Knee to the mid set. No, he's not going top rope. Is he? Oh, my God. He's going middle rope, which is bad enough. New man on Monday's big elbow. No, reversed. Eli Lovely punched the mid section. Missed on the kick, though. Rebound, big splash. And he's going for the pin here. Thinks he has enough. Done. It is a two count. And somehow, Brian Damage kicks out. I thought for sure he was going to steal it. Eli getting the rise crowd up on their feet right now. Brian Damage had a great debut on World Warzone. Struggling so far here against Eli. Oh my goodness. And that will take the wind right out of you. Especially for a high flyer like Eli. A big right hand on Brian Damage. Set up for something. Oh my god. A running knee strike from a man of that size should never connect with someone's temple, Eli. Kicking out of two. Brian Damage setting up though. He is not done there with that knee strike. He's setting up. Belly to belly. Has. No. He can't lift Eli. It looked like he was struggling. Oh my god. Eli with the strength. I thought Brian Damage had him up for a. A little bear hug there or something. Or belly to belly. But. 
I think it's back. Maybe some back issues. It looks like he had some trouble getting Eli up off the ground. Lovely combo. Eli after taking over. He is setting up kick to the midsection. And a twist of fate. Love that move in the RPW universe. It looks incredible. Hooks the leg. What a win that would have been for Eli. He is looking. Damn, good though. Another twist of fate. No, reversed. And that could be a costly reversal there. Between the two, their strength from Brian Damage. As he tosses Eli like last night's leftovers across the rise ring. Now goes for an Alabama slam. Down goes Eli. Back of the head, connecting off the mat. And I think that could be all she wrote for Eli. It was indeed one, two, three. And I'll tell you what, Eli had a great match there. He rolls out of the ring. He started off so, so well against Brian Damage there. He was looking strong. The twist of fate, I thought he had it won. And Brian Damage with the resiliency. And gets another win in his RPW career. Well, not every match is a brand versus brand match. As we have two World War Zone superstars. Noah Kay, the former United States champion, of course. Versus Liam West, the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. This is a big one-on-one. -on -one and a chance for both of these superstars to advance. Of course, Casey Jacobs has already advanced of the Storm Riders. Whereas this man's best friend and tag team partner, Ben Fuller. Uh, failed to advance last week against Draven Wild. So can Noah K get uh, some redemption for his tag team partner and advance against one half of the Storm Riders? I still can't believe Liam West could potentially be the next World Heavy Champion on World Warzone. The way this man has come out of the shadows, he's 8 and 2 in singles, ladies and gentlemen. He is not a superstar to be messed about with. He really, really isn't. And I honestly think he has a good chance of beating Crazy Joker and becoming the new World Heavyweight Champion. No, okay, top rope, early doors. Always a danger move. Of course, the perfect tens are wanting to tag team a little bit more. We may see them on World War Zone next week in some tag team action. Of course, after this week, the Rise uh, tournament, if he goes out, they will both be out. So maybe on Rise, they can get some tag matches going as well since the perfect ends want to finally showcase some of their tag team action which they've not been able to do as of yet we're starting to take over now elbow drop to the back as he starts to have his way with noah k another big elbow followed by another big elbow third big elbow connecting if i was Liam west i would just pin him now noah k looks out of it oh come on text curse as he rolls out and gets back involved with clothesline. Clubbing. Taking down Liam West. Perfect tens against the Storm Riders. Right now, of course, both of these superstars in a tag team. Both of these superstars in tag team action often. And both of these superstars wanted to get better. And closer to those uh, RPW Tag Team Championships. Of course, the Ministry are now the number one contenders. Your, uh, yours truly, RK, was in the main event of this past World War Zone. Just showing how it's done. You know, Key Iverson, that's how you win in the main event. That's how you become number one contender. If you, if you want to learn, feel free to ask me. You know, DM me. I'll, I'll maybe help you out in the future with uh, how to main event, how to actually be a, a proper RPW superstar. Soon to be two-time RPW Tag Team Champions. That's all I'm saying. But we'll continue with Noah K versus Liam West here today. Ron trying to get these two back into the ring by any means necessary. A lot of uh, these matches falling to the outside today. These fans getting a, their money's worth. A lot of them are looking in the ring when they was out of the ring, not watching the action. I think it was watching Ron more so. Liam West, another big clothesline. Goes to the corner. Not the time. He thought Noah was down for the count. Noah K straight back up. A punch to the lower back. You can't take your eye off the opponent. In a match like this, Junior Heavyweight Championship, potentially on the line later on if you advance. You can't lose focus that easily. DDT, no. Liam West fighting back. Left-handers to the midsection. And Liam West, big power slam. Flying across the ring with Noah K. In hands, two count and a kick out. Liam West again, he likes he likes taking in the RPW universe. I mean, to be fair, when you're a rookie, it does make sense. He's on a massive run right now. Like I say, former Cruiserweight champion, former Randomizer champion, potential uh, world heavyweight champion. Not a lot of people make that jump. Randomizer, cruiserweight, 
World Heavyweight. Normally it's the United States or UK or IC or back to Cruiserweight Tag Team, maybe. But going straight for the World Heavyweight Championship and becoming number one contender is a big step. But speaking of winning championships, Noah K knows what that's like. Oh my God, but the Special K is reversed. The Special K is reversed and Liam West instead rolls him up with a DDT. And the Egghead is busted open across his nose. I think it was he grabs the rope though. To stay alive another day. I think that would have been the three count right then and there. And up. Blue Thunderbomb. Takes him down. Shoulders are down as well. Only hooked one leg though. It could be costly. No, it's not. One, two, three. And Noah K. With a big, big loss here on Rise. Both members of the Perfect Tens are eliminated from the Rise Championship Tournament. Both members of the Storm Riders continue to to the next round ladies and gentlemen i wonder if we're going to see them together against each other in action what a win for that man he is on a roll nine and two in singles and just like that we are the penoma match of today's showing of course go back on a world wars and we're still it doesn't seem real to me i was going to say it's friday if he's friday again but again they got traded they both switched brands and gone are back on mondays which i never seem to remember of course a member of eop now as well which is incredible Gore against Chris. Two superstars. Kind of in similar boats in a way, I think. Uh, very, very similar. Two former champions. Of course, Gore's never been a singles champion still to this day. Um, I think the time will come. 100%. But he's uh, formerly a master of the tag team arts. You know, a submission specialist at his finest. Chris was a former uh, Grand Slam champion on Toxic Thursday. He's in, in a similar boat. He could win on Thursday. He can't win anywhere else. Gore could win in tag. And now he's struggling even in tag as well. So, of course, drawing DOP, we'll see how he does. But I think um, coming off the win in the UK tournament on Monday, I th my money's on Gore for this match right here. I think Gore has that momentum right now, finally, and has a chance to continue with some wins. First pinfall. Is it going to be enough? No, it is not. For Chris, just throwing him off. Oh my god, but Chris. So, so, uh, showing some strength of his own. The main event is up next, ladies and gentlemen. Alfredo versus Dragon Romanic. And it is a junior heavyweight tournament match, but also a double header because it is also a cruiserweight number one contender match, ladies and gentlemen. If, if Dragon Romanic wins, he gets a title rematch against Damien Havoc. And Fredo will be bottom of the line, back of the line for the Cruiserweight Championship and vice versa if Fredo wins he gets a title match against Damon Havoc after beating him on World Warzone a couple of weeks ago and Dragon Romanic will be back of the line for the Cruiserweight Championship so a lot on the line for the main event here today not only the Junior Heavyweight Tournament but also big ramifications for the Cruiserweight Championship as well as these two get back into the ring and a big chop by Krish a lovely Hurricane Rana as well go for the pin Former member of the Cure, of course, before that all went to crap. We went for a spine buster rake of the eyes from Gore. Oh my goodness gracious me, what a suplex. The strength from this man, the new moves we've seen from Gore in recent weeks and new moves and old moves alike as he brings back the Kinshasa, the devastating knee strike to the face of Chris, but does not get the job done. Gore now going up to No Man's Land. He's moved up there quickly and connects as well. I don't see Gorgo top rope often, but he looked like he knew what he was doing almost. Chris fighting back with the reversal. Looking around the RPW universe. Raking, is that in his nose? Raking the jaw apart. Nice elbow as well. Gore is busted open. That takes a lot out of you. When you got busted open in the ring, when your face is bleeding, it gets in your eyes, gets in your nose, gets in the way you're breathing and... Just makes you tired, sluggish. You can't let it affect you. Gore fighting back. Nice reversal. And he's doing what Liam West done. Where he thinks Chris is down. But instead he's just there waiting. Oh, but he's not quick enough though. Chris was there waiting. But Gore, even after taunting to the RPW Universe, is able to take over. There's a pin. I don't think that's going to be enough. It's just a one. The mission though is all it takes. Irish whip. Rebound. Oh my god, tilt a well. Power slam and Gore is. I told you. He has momentum after uh, Monday's World War Zone. This is as good. Oh, never mind. I was going to say this is as confident as we've seen Gore in recent weeks. But he gets hit with the spine buster. If he lost, then that would have been so, so awkward. 
All it takes is a Krish cross, though. As Krish slams him down. Shades of Jocko there, his former mentor. Looked like a redemption driver. Oh, my goodness. And again, Gore had all the momentum. He was dominating. And all this bloody nonsense, hands behind the back nonsense, got the better of him. And the glorious one, Krish gets the win, ladies and gentlemen. And is able to advance in the Rise Championship Tournament. Gore could have been in two tournaments. Unfortunately, he is now eliminated. And here we go then. The main event of Rise has Fredo from World War Zone. Dragon Demonic from Friday Night Fury 1 on 1. Not only is this a junior heavyweight tournament match, the final round 1 match after this, all of the winners that we've seen in the past couple of weeks will then face each other in round 2 as we get to the finals where the first ever Rise champion will be announced. But also, this is a number one contenders match for the Cruiserweight Championship, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of this becomes number one contender and the loser goes to the back of the line. Fredo coming out first and foremost here on Rise. Of course, he's coming off a loss on World Warzone. Ben Fuller, Panama match Fuller, let me tell you something. I watched the uh, match from backstage before my main event appearance and Ben Fuller was looking decent against Alfredo. He looked fantastic. Of course, Dragon Romanic, former Cruiserweight champion himself. Fredo's never been Cruiserweight champion yet. So Dragon Romanic wants his belt back and wants a title match against Damien Havoc one-on-one. -on -one. He lost it in a multi-man match, of course. He wasn't the one to be pinned. So he thinks a one-on-one -on -one is the perfect place and time to win his title back. Fredo and Dragon Romanic one on one. And here we go. The bell has been rung. And the main event is underway. Right handers from Fredo. My goodness, little boxing style from the World Warzone. Man, I snap man. Take down into a neck breaker. Dragon Romanic looking lost already. Fredo misses some grapples. Romanic, nice. Snap suplex. What a great main event this is, though. Two big names. Fredo may not be a champion. As of late, he's not been a champion on World Warzone or in recent months, even back on Friday Night Fury. But remember, this guy was a former Grand Slam champion on Toxic Thursday. Former team captain of Toxic Thursday as well. He has experience in the big moments, you know, in pay-per-view matches, in main event matches, in title matches. He has experience. So we'll see if he can bring it to the main event of Rise here today. Even though Dragon Monarch's been a champion more recent... I think Fredo still has more experience in the field. So it's a thing of more experience, but, you know, further back. Or less experience, but he has more recent experience, if that makes sense. So I think it's going to be a great match regardless. Just going to be careful of that armbar. And apparently of the leg lock as well, Dragon Manic. We know the Serbian loves a submission hold here and there. Goes for one on the outside, but Fredo able to fight out of that one. Fredo on the outside looking in. Goes through the middle rope into a little neck breaker. Fantastic. From Fredo. Rope break though. Romanek now taking over. First bit of offense for him. He's been quiet so far. And finally. Starts to get some momentum potentially. Romanek back into the ring. Fredo going for the little neck breaker again. I love that move. I love that move. Shades of his old finisher. The rolling. Stunner. He goes for the rolling. I'm prettier instead. Fredo's move set. Let me tell you something. This guy bringing out all of the stops right now to count. And a kick out. Let me remind you, the winner of this advances in the Junior Heavyweight Tournament and also becomes number contender and gets a rematch for the uh, Cruiserweight Championship as well. FaceTime connecting one of my new favorite finishers in RPW. It's quick and effective. Oh my God, I thought that was going to be three. The hand was surely coming down. Fredo kick to the midsection is reversed. Romanic fighting back with a German suplex. He needs an armbar and he's going for it. Fredo's legs surely kicking off the ropes. They are indeed rope break is called. Another armbar though. Another armbar. Fredo, a feet on the ropes again, says the referee. Dragon, you need to get him out of the corner. Get him out of the corner. He's shushing the rise crowd as it was getting loud. And I think they were shouting as well, rope break. So he's probably telling them to be quiet and mind their own business. Again, working on the arm. It's smart to work on the arms when that is your main finishing move. But it doesn't do enough as of yet. 
Fredo gets caught. No. Nice reversal from Fredo. Romanek again working on the arm. It's smart though. It's very, very smart because he knows he wants to lock in the armbar at some point. So you might as well work on the arm as much as you can throughout the match. So it's weaker when you eventually do lock it in, which could be now. Fredo started off strong with a FaceTime. Nice reversal though. He ducks it. That was surely Dragon Romanek going for the armbar. Fredo reverses it though. And instead hits the unprettier again. Hooks the leg on the logo. Away from the ropes. It's smart by Fredo. Make sure it's away from the ropes. One, two. And a shoulder up from the former champion. Fredo not happy. Really, really not happy. You know, with the momentum again, he's taller. He's uh, telling Dragon Romanek to bring it on. Dragon Romanek is going to do just that. We know these two have a lot of history on their days from Fran Fury. Now, of course, on a separate brand, but still in the same division. And still, both superstars do not like each other. And both think the other should not be number one. Because for the Cruiserweight Championship. Dragon Romanek, former champion. Oh, he's going for a Blanco bomb instead. A throwback power bomb. Shoulders down for Fredo, proving he can win without submission. No. Fredo, shoulder up. Dragon Romanek can't believe it, ladies and gentlemen. He can't believe it. Both superstars back into the ring. After a big beatdown on the outside, Fredo was going for the unpretty there. But the punch was too slow instead. Gets caught with the snake eyes. Face first in the corner. Dragon Monarch shoulders down for Fredo. Referee's there counting away to count. Fredo fights to live another day, ladies and gentlemen. What a main event between these two. Oh, but it could be all she wrote. If Dragon Monarch can lock in an armbar. No, we went for the power bomb again. I think he's trying to prove to the operative universe he can win without the use of submissions. But instead gets caught with a FaceTime. What a finisher. He can hit it out of anywhere. Oh, road break. You've got to bring him away, though. What a waste from Fredo. You've got to bring him away from the ropes after hitting a finisher. Oh, but it doesn't matter. He hits another one. And now we're away from... I mean, that's how you do it. I think he heard me from the announcer's desk all the way up on the stage. One, two, and three. And Fredo is advancing. Oh, my God. What? On rise now? We saw these guys... On World War Zone, they then got involved in Friday Night Fury and now even on Rise, ladies and gentlemen, the Baghead. Of course, he's normally with a dog mask as well, these two. We're assuming members of the new Cure, Jocko's stable, ladies and gentlemen, as he comes down and takes out both Fredo and Dragon Romanic. Well, Fredo is the new number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship and advances in the junior heavyweight tournament, but another attack in RPW, and the security have to start getting involved, because this is getting outrageous. First on World War Zone, then on Friday Night Fury, and now even on Rise here in London, ladies and gentlemen. It's absolutely unacceptable to end off a show. Congratulations to Fredo and all the other winners, though, that will be advancing, and we'll see you on Friday Night Fury, ladies and gentlemen. That right there, that is not who we are, but this... This is who we are. Keep your sleeves rolled up, please, and thank you.